You know the saying, one man's junk is another woman's treasure. Well, a few of us here at New Day think we might have some treasures. So to get an expert opinion, we of course called on antique appraiser, Dr. Lori. Today, because I was scouring my house for something, I found something I have from my childhood my assistant's going to bring in for me. This beautiful Bob Mackie Barbie. Now, I don't know if it's worth anything, but I mean, she's just gorgeous. She's all shy. I love her. You she's love her. gorgeous. Right, right. Just like your assistant's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> what is really fun about dolls and collecting dolls is to actually have them in good condition. So when you're looking at the doll, of course, the tradition of Barbie is very important. That idea of, of telling girls and teaching girls that they can be anything they want to be. And then also having that connection with great designer Bob Mackie. So the thing I don't like about what's happening with your doll right now is your hands are on it, <laughs> okay? Holding the dolls, and I know you're gonna go, oh no, I can't play with the doll. Well, the fact that your hands are on it actually will attract dirt. It'll, the oils on your hands will attract dirt, go to the doll and can devalue and damage the doll long-term. Uh. So I like people to have their hands off dolls like those dolls because those dolls are display dolls, collectible dolls. And if you had the box, it would increase value too. Yeah, okay? the box is long gone. The box is long gone, I remember the box. But in fact, the doll is in very good condition and, and the doll is an upper scale doll. So in that condition, without the box, it's worth about a hundred dollars. Oh, really? If, That's if less than I paid for it. I know, if it had the box, the doll would probably be worth in the in the neighborhood of between three hundred and fifty and five hundred dollars. Okay, Keep even though the they're doll in the box. Yeah, even though the doll is made in large numbers, but it's a collectible. It is made for the collectibles market. It is not typically made for you or your beautiful assistant to be playing with. That's not what it was intended for. There are other Barbies for that. You're right. Okay, I've got one more thing. My oh, assistant's sure. going to bring me. It okay. is a. This is a perfume bottle that an aunt gave me. It's like this gorgeous milk glass. And on the bottom, it says it's made in France. I thought you got it from your mom, though. My auntie, thank you. <laughs> you got to know the provenance. She's thinking about history, and that's important. You want to make sure you know the provenance. So <laughs> what's interesting about that particular bottle, and actually on my YouTube channel, I just did a whole, a whole video about valuable and collectible perfume bottles, is... Is there any perfume left in it? No. <laughs> no, okay, your assistant says no. So that's one of the things you wanna think about because the perfume itself has a market. People will actually resell the vintage and antique perfume smell. They'll actually put it into smaller vials and sell the perfume as well as the actual bottles. Your bottle, about this haul, dates from the 1950s and is a nice milk glass. It's kind of a um, opalescent glass, and that's important, and made in France. There's also numbers on those bottles that relate to, in fact, batches, how the piece is made and who made the glass bottle. Value on your bottle, about $75 for the bottle that's empty. Oh, wow, yeah, it says 45 on the bottom, wow. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, there's nothing you don't know. All right, <laughs> now we have someone on our staff, Derek, he, has a dresser he found at a thrift store he wanted you to look at. What did you think of that? I liked the dresser a lot. Here's what I like. I like original hardware. I like solid hard woods. It must be heavy as heck. It's pretty big and it's actually intended for a TV table. You could use it as a dresser, but it's intended to put something on it and then put things like magazines inside. So using it for the living room or for the den might be the best use for it. It dates to the late 60s, early 70s. It's really quite of age of Aquarius kind of looking when you see it. Yeah. And I like the original hardware too. Value on that piece, about $400. Derek, by the way, paid $35 for that dresser. See, see, 35 for 400 and I hope he negotiated. But yeah, at the thrift store, there's lots of good stuff. Sometimes it's just to decorate the house or something that's like functional or you know, it's a seasonal thing. You're just looking for stuff that will work in a season. But I mean, there's a lot of great stuff that's being overlooked at thrift stores, yard sales, estate sales, antique shops. It's out there. I'm here to help you. You have a game you play on the YouTube channel. Let's talk about that. It's called Dr. Lori's Treasure Hunt, where I have 
three objects or five objects and I show them to audience and I tell them a little bit about it. And then you guess which one is most valuable. They, people play all over the world. It's really funny to, to hear, you know, the Australians guessing against the Americans. It's so <laughs> much fun. And um, people are saying, oh no, it can't be that. Oh, it must be this. And it's a lot of fun. And it teaches you how to identify the date or the age of something. It teaches mm -hmm. you how to identify materials and understand materials. And then what the markets are doing because the markets will always change, you know. Um, certain times of the year, you know, if you're near a big sporting event, you know, the market will be all about sports for that particular time. When to sell something is just as important as what you're selling and to know which markets are going to bring more money for one object than another. And there you have it. So you can play along with Dr. Lori on her treasure hunt show. We've got the links on our website. So just head over there.